All right, here we go with the JFAC 8 video. Here's the JFAC 7 knife, the stainless sand my. I think it turned out really good. Really happy with that. I really like the distressed brass guard and the burl. Turned out great as far as I as far as I'm concerned. Today it's an old rasp. I pulled this out of my metals curiosity bin. I've got this bin full of old rusty stuff that I mean to do something with, but I never do. This was in there, and there's no maker's mark on it. But it is old, it is rusty. I have faith that it's not case hardened. I've never seen a rasp that is case hardened, but I'm sure they're out there. But the older and rustier they are, the less likely that is. I have to put a little handle on it for my tongs, and we'll start forging. You really don't usually forge rasps or files, for that matter, do you? The, the point is sort of to leave the, the checkering and the cutting surface on there for effect and when you forge you get rid of that right you smash in the dimples which in the case of a rasp can be a problem you can leave some cold shuts in there so I don't know why I'm bothering to forge this I guess I needed to just I needed a JFAC project and this was the first thing I grabbed so Ugh. sometimes scrap does come broken this one had a little tear in it if we go back, we can actually see that tear in the first shot. I just I wasn't paying attention. I didn't inspect it that closely, and that was a big mistake. I did a video for Patreon subscribers a while ago when I had Patreon asking the question, "Is scrap crap?" And yeah, I think I, I think I answered yes. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much it is crap. It's got stress fractures and. You don't know what type of steel it is. Now, sometimes the benefit or the appeal of using something old and transforming it and, and carrying with with the new item the the sort of sentiment of the old item or you know whatever. I think there is some value in that. But scrap, you know, take these rasps and files for example. You don't know what metal they are, right? Aside from stress fractures, wear and tear, um, all the other stuff, you can't be certain of. You don't know what the steel is. You can't really heat treat it appropriately. Not not maximally. You can't maximally heat treat it to a prescribed regimen, right? Because you don't know what the steel is. People say these, for example, are W2 or 1095. And I just don't think that's the case. Uh, maybe there's some extra vanadium in there. That's sort of been a theory. Um, it's a known steel with some extra alloys. I don't know. I will say that this doesn't quench in Parks 50. Rasps uh, quench in water or brine which is why I don't really don't like to force them because they tend to split and crack when I try to heat treat them in water. But we are going to risk it today. And they temper at a very low temperature. I think, I think these temper around 350 or 360. Um, so not at all like W2 or 1095. You know, even maybe with a little extra vanadium, I'm not sure that would account for those differences. Which is not to say they don't make a good knife steel. I think, again, that's just one more reason you wouldn't forge these under most cases. You would want to preserve the checkering or the, the file pattern just by doing some stock removal. And then you just temper it down. You don't bother with heat treating. I haven't done a whole lot of forging in the last couple of years, to be honest. And then you go a couple months without forging after that and your muscles fall out and things get a little tricky. I've been doing a lot of work on my heels, trying to get my, my heels drawn out a little better, a little crisper, a little more squared with the first part of the handle. And part of that is using the peen now. I, I try to cross peen and draw on some material from in front of the heel back towards the heel. And um, I guess to some extent that works, not always.
Next I'm going to go back and work in the Mercaso area. I'd like to get some crisper plunge lines. That's something I'm really trying to work on. If I could wave a magic wand, I would be able to do that better. So I've cut off the end there, the handle end, at the uh, butt of the knife handle. And now I'm going to shape the handle, finish shaping the handle. This is sort of my go-to shape right now. I've, I forge a lot of knives with this type of handle shape. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know if that means I'm in a rut <laughs> or if I just like it or... Um, it is It is a comfortable handle. To my hand, it's a very comfortable handle, so maybe that's why I'm drawn to it, I don't know. Now usually right about this stage of forging, I'm putting things in the press and making sure everything's flat. Flat and, and even, you know, the width dimension is stable all throughout the handle, for example, but my press is broken, so I'm just going to do this all by hand, which is good practice to go back and have to do that stuff from time to time. I have a flatter here you'll see in a minute. I'll bring that out and try to get some work done with that. Got that distal taper in place. And here's the flatter. Nowhere near as efficient or good as, as the press <laughs> doing this stuff. But it'll have to do. So these things require a lot of tippy tapping to get straight, perfectly straight, right? Especially if it's tapered. If it's perfectly flat, you can throw it in a vise while it's hot and try to crank on the vise and straighten things out. And that does a pretty good job. But when you forged in, a distal taper or a tapered handle, there's not really the ability to put in a vise, so you have to sort of do this tapping. Now, let's say your tip, for example, is bent to the left. You're looking down the knife and the tip warps to the left. You don't place it on the on the right side and try to hammer the tip down uh, back towards the right. You place it on the left side, hammer just behind the uh, bend, and it brings the tip up and back to the right, for example. So like we talked about, rasps for me only quench in water. Maybe you guys have better luck. So I'm going to go ahead and show the water quench. I've got some soap in there to uh, break up the surface tension so there's no bubbles, extra bubbles on the side of the knife. Maybe prevent cracking or so, I've heard. I'm going to go ahead and cool the rest of the blade in oil. There's no point in, in risking a warp of the handle or the spine of the knife, which is why I only quench the edge. I just don't want to mess with too much warping and have to do that all again. So there that is. You guys have a go, and I'll see you in the next JFAC.